This has been a huge shock to the majority of the Fortnite community. Tifu is suing FaZe Clan over what he deemed an oppressive contract. I mean, what do you guys think? Does this seem a little strange to you too? A team that Tifu seems so cool with. They've made tons of blocks together, had tremendous relationship. I mean, do you think FaZe would suddenly backstab Tifu like this? We're gonna look into the details surrounding this controversy so you can come to your own conclusion. But before we start this video, I just wanna make it very clear that we are not accusing either Tifu or FaZe of any wrongdoing. The details are barely unfolding and nobody is guilty or innocent as of now. We just wanna bring it to your attention. Before we get started, this is Keith Allen Henson. Make sure to like and subscribe, let's get into it. Slasher is the first one who brought this article up, posted by The Hollywood Reporter. He is very well known in the Overwatch League scene and has been involved in many leaks like this before. Let's take a look at Tifu's dual partner, Cloaksy. He tweeted out today, I can't stream now because of this bull. Now everyone is going to be asking me questions in chat and I don't know what to say. Do I choose my organization or my best friend? Yikes, I'd hate to be in Cloaksy's situation. I mean, imagine having to choose between the team that helped you grow or your best friend. Seems he's in really hot water. Is Tifu suing FaZe Clan merely because he doesn't want them to take a part of his earnings? Or is there something deeper? Some fans are siding with FaZe while others are on Tifu's side. I mean, look at some of these tweets. Nate Shot, the CEO of 100 Thieves, tweeted this out. I hope recent news doesn't affect the broader gaming community's perception of esports gaming team. There are plenty of organizations in the space whose top priority are their professional players and content creators. I agree with this. Honestly, this is the first time the relatively new esports industry is taking a hit and their companies have a very real chance of being looked at thoroughly. As you all know, many of the young talented players that are being signed to pro teams are well under the age of 21. Being younger, it can be really easy to take advantage of them as far as contracts are concerned. This is the type of controversy which can spark serious problems for the gaming world. Now, let's dive into the gist of this lawsuit. According to many sources, including the lawsuit file, Tifu was very unhappy with the treatment he got from FaZe. As mentioned in the lawsuit, they were reportedly entitled to take 80% of his revenue from all branded videos he posted on YouTube, Twitch, or any other social media platform. That was along with the whopping 50% from any touring or appearances Tifu did. Prize money, on the other hand, was never mentioned. Tifu also mentioned in the lawsuit that FaZe pressured him into committing dangerous stunts. After being supposedly hurt, the org allegedly refused to pay his medical bills. I think this situation has backfired on Tifu. If we take a look at his videos from a couple of years back, we see that he has many videos posted of him doing crazy stunts. So, it would be very far-fetched for Tifu to claim FaZe forced him into doing anything he didn't consent to. Tifu also noted that he attempted to terminate the contract with them back in September, but the esports org refused, stating that he is still bound by the terms of his contract. Now, guys, before we jump to conclusions, we have to give the benefit of the doubt. Was FaZe Clan actually doing something to Tifu bad enough where he was forced to sue them? I definitely want to say filing a lawsuit, which sparks major controversy, would be very foolish to do unless the situation really warranted it. Tifu would need to have a good enough reason to go ahead and sue one of the gaming world's biggest clans. I mean, think about it. FaZe is probably one of the top five organizations in the world. So to go ahead and forcibly break yourself out of it, there has to be a good enough reason. Banks, the leader of FaZe Clan, went off on Twitter, posting his side of the story. He seemed pretty disappointed, stating, yo, this whole thing with Tifu is pretty unbelievable. We have never taken 80% of anyone's prize money. Not sure where that came from, but a contract like that has never existed. We've collected zero dollars from Turner's prize money, zero. He also tweeted out a video of Tifu from two years ago showing Turner shotgunning beers when he was underage. Ouch, that's a yikes for Tifu, who claimed in the lawsuit he was pressured to drink on certain occasions. Yet a few years back, he was drinking and didn't seem to have a problem posting it. Banks seems to be really on the edge about all of this. The guy has been tweeting nonstop. At one point, he even said he was hurting inside. One tweet even confirmed that FaZe's contract does indeed outline the prize splits for revenue as noted on the contract, but claims FaZe haven't collected anything from it. So what do you guys think? Is Bank right? Should Tifu have tried to break out from FaZe over contract terms, or is it deeper than that? Let us know in the comment section your guys' thoughts. I'd love to hear them. 
Following the allegations, FaZe Clan also released their official statement claiming they have not received any of Tfue's revenue or winnings other than $60,000 made from their partnership. When we think about 60K, it seems like a joke compared to the tens of millions Tfue's been pulling in since the start of his Fortnite career after signing with FaZe. So why all the fuss? Keemstar tweeted out a poll asking people whose side they were rooting for. So far, it seems more people were in favor of FaZe. Yikes for Tfue, guys. It'll be really interesting to see how this one unfolds. Are people just siding because they appreciate all that FaZe has done for the gaming world? Or is it just a bandwagon effect? While many opinions hit the dust, here's Ninja's take on all this. I mean, Tfue was already growing uh, and he was starting to get a pretty big, pretty big following. But I mean, bro, FaZe blew up Cloaksy and Turner. Like Cloaksy was not, I mean, they, they both really weren't getting like like redonkulous viewers. They had like Banks and a bunch of other, you know, of these top phase creators who are like, you know, tweeting them, telling everyone about them, retweeting clips. Like Banks has a lot of, of pull on Twitter. Like he gets really good interaction. Do you guys agree with Ninja? Did FaZe make Tifu? Are they solely responsible for his crazy growth? There are definitive stats showing after joining FaZe, his numbers skyrocketed. Here are a few screenshots proving that to be true. If FaZe did contribute to Tifu's insane growth, isn't it quite selfish deciding to branch off from them after all they've done for you? Could there be something the organization isn't telling us? After all the drama unfolded, Banks then tweeted out this. At the end of the day, it's all about the money. Clearly, Tifu wanted millions of dollars in salary in addition to the millions he's already earned on his platforms. He was unhappy and this was his attempt to get out of the contract. Could Tifu really be going greedy on us? Do you think he saw FaZe taking most of his Fortnite World Cup earnings? What's interesting is that CLG Wish tweeted out, money is also the reason Tifu wasn't allowed to leave FaZe. You guys wanted your cash cow and he didn't want to be there. This all could have been avoided if you let him go on good terms. Maybe he knows something we don't. I must say there's a lot of heat on this topic and not a single response from Tifu himself. Banks has already given his full statement on Keemstar's podcast. The way Banks put it was a bit of an emotional appeal as he stated, all I've ever done for Tifu is help him grow. I love the dude and this is what I get, I'm broken. I think Daquan put it best when he said, without knowing the details, I will say I know Banks, met him in person, and I don't think he's robbing anybody out of what they worked hard for. 80% seems way too big, just my two cents. Wait till all the details come out before judging Tifu or Banks. Now that is, in short, the sort of personal stance we all need to have at the moment. Not quick to judge people without knowing all the details. Remember, we have seen this sort of thing before with many other people trying to shred others' credibility. But what does this all have to say about other esports organizations? This controversy means there might be possibilities that other organizations out there like TSM, Team Liquid, and 100 Thieves may have strict requirements in their contracts too. But one thing is for certain, as Nate Shot put it, some clans just don't understand the esports ecosystem and are bound to take advantage when they can. It's very possible Tifu's contract may have had some restrictions and requirements which he didn't fully know before signing. I don't know if something like this is what Tifu should have done in response, but it's clear this situation is blown out of proportion. And Tifu's silence may be proof that he didn't want any of this to go public in the first place. Anyways, guys, let us know what you think about these allegations. Is Tifu lying or is FaZe Clan guilty? Is it all just a big misunderstanding? Leave your thoughts below. And once again, this is Keith Allen Henson. I hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more coming out soon.